Hi, the next in the series on transposition flaps is the description of the rhomboid flaps, the Limburg flap, the Dufermental flap and the Webster 30 degree angle flap. The definition, the biogeometry and the modifications of these flaps and the clinical situations in which they are used is also discussed. One of the modifications of the transposition flap is the rhomboid flap. The modification is that in the usual transposition flap, the donor site is closed with a skin graft. Here in the rhomboid flap, the donor site is closed primarily by utilizing the laxity of the surrounding skin. It must be remembered that the term rhomboid refers to the shape of the defect and not of the flap. So what we will be seeing about the rhomboid flap are the definition, the features of the Limburg flap, the Dufermental flap, the Webster 30 degree angle flap, the biogeometry of all these flaps and the modifications in them and lastly the clinical uses of these flaps. First of all, the rhomboid is a parallelogram in which the adjacent sides are of unequal lengths, the opposite angles are equal and the available angles are non-right angled. If the sides are of equal length, it is called a rhombus. The classic rhomboid flap is otherwise known as the Limburg flap which was described in 1963 by Alexander Alexandrovich Limburg. Characteristically, the angles are 120 degrees and 60 degrees. As we have mentioned, it is the defect that is in the shape of a rhomboid. This rhomboid is drawn as follows. The four points are marked A, B, C and D. AB is the short diagonal, CD is the long diagonal. The angle CAD measures 120 degrees and the angle ACB measures 60 degrees. Once the defect has been created in the form of a rhombus ABCD, the short diagonal AB is extended to a point E where the distance of AB is equal to BE. From the point E, a parallel line is drawn to the line BD and equal in length to the line BD up to a point called F. So, BD is equal to EF in length and BD is parallel to the line EF. This point F is the pivot point of the rhomboid flap. So the line D, B, E and F forms the flap that is marked to cover the rhomboid defect A, B, C, D. So how does this flap move? The flap represented by point B moves to point A and the point E moves to point C. The point C is the maximum tension of the flap. It is called the promontory of the flap. What is the resulting suture line after raising and inserting the flap? Remember, the side that is adjacent to the flap is removed. The flap inset is done on the three sides shown and the, this is the leading edge of the flap. So once the flap is inset, this is the suture line. The point B is sutured to point A, the point E is sutured to point C and the point F is sutured to point B and the suturing is done. We saw an example of a Limburg flap for a rhomboid defect. However, for each rhomboid defect, four Limburg flaps are possible. The first example was when we extended the short diagonal and drew the flap in this direction. However, we can also extend the diagonal and then draw the flap in this direction which will raise a flap based superiorly. The short diagonal can also be extended and the flap marked like this or it can be marked superiorly based. Thus, four Limburg flaps are possible for each rhomboid defect. 
Coming to the modifications, there are two main modifications, mainly the number. We can have a double rhomboid flap or a triple rhomboid flap. We shall first see the double rhomboid flap. When the defect is elongated, making a single rhomboid defect may result in a very large rhomboid which it may not be able to cover with a single Limburg flap. In that situation, when the defect becomes something like a parallelogram like this, which actually consists of two rhomboids. These two rhomboids can be planned in the manner that is regularly used and the flaps can be marked. So two rhomboid flaps can be planned like this based on the geometry that we have seen so far. This is called the double rhomboid flap and the suture line of this double rhomboid flap can be marked as we have learned. That is, the side adjacent to the flap is not included, the other three sides are marked and the leading edge of the flap is also marked. We shall now see how the triple rhomboid flap is done. We shall now see how a triple rhomboid flap is marked. Here, the defect is made into a circle. Starting with the 12 o'clock position on the circle, a Mercedes Benz like symbol is marked. This will divide the circle into three segments. The midpoint of each segment is marked on the circumference of the circle and from each of these points a rhomboid is formed as shown. So we get three rhomboids. Each of these three rhomboids is considered as a single defect. The short diagonal is marked and the flap is marked as we have already seen and as we already know two Limburg flaps can be planned for each of these rhomboid defects. Hence, six possible Limburg flaps can be planned for this triple rhomboid defect, which is arisen from a circular defect. When choosing the definitive three Limburg flaps from these possible six flaps, we need to remember that the flaps must be in the same direction. That is, they must all be either clockwise or anti-clockwise. When marking the resultant suture line that is going to occur, we just need to remember, we need to remove the side of the defect that is adjacent to the flap. We then mark the remaining three sides and the extension of the short diagonal on all the three flaps. And finally, do not mark the side of the flap which is parallel to the edge of the defect. So the final suture line can be marked based on those principles and we get the suture line like this. The deformental flap is a modification of the Limburg flap where the angle is more than 120 degrees. When one of the angles of the rhomboid is more than 120 degrees, the deformental flap is planned. Here, the short diagonal is extended. The short diagonal here is AB and the other edges are C and D. The short diagonal AB is extended and the long diagonal CD is also marked. Now the side of the defect BD is also extended. These two extended lines are bisected by the line BE which is equal in length to AC. Now, from the point E, a line is drawn parallel to the long diagonal CD. The length of this line EF is equal to the length of CB. So, CB is equal to EF and the line EF is parallel to the long diagonal CD. So, when the flap DBEF is raised, the point B goes to A, the point F goes towards this point B and the angle E sits in the angle formed by C. The resulting suture line will be as described for the Limburg flap. Here there is a difference in that in the Limburg flap the suture line was more transverse like this. But here it moves upward because the flap has also 
advanced. We have already seen that when the sides of the rhomboid are all equal, it is called a rhombus. When we have a defect like that and we plan deformental flaps, it is possible to get 8 flaps for resurfacing the defect. When the sides are equal, the short diagonals are also equal. So, two flaps can be planned from each corner of this defect, like this. We have seen that the deformental flap is done when one of the angles of the rhomb rhomboid is more than 120 degrees. When one of the angles of the rhomboid is less than 60 degrees, a Webster 30 degree angle flap can be done, which is a modification of the rhomboid flap. Here, the ABCD, the rhomboid is marked, but it is found that the angle at C is very acute, less than 60 degrees. Just like in a deformental flap, the short diagonal is marked, it is extended, and the line BD, the side is also extended. These two extended lines are bisected and this line is equal in length to the line AC. In a deformental flap, from this point E, we would drop a line parallel to the long diagonal. But here in the Webster 30 degree angle flap, a line is marked at 30 degree angle for a length equal to CB. So this line EF is equal to CB. The line AC is equal to the length of the line BE and the length of the line EF is equal to the length of the line CB. This flap DBEF moves in such a way that DB is sutured to AD. The angle E is sutured to the angle C. The modification of the Webster 30 degree angle flap is the modification done with a M plastic. When there is a lesion like this and the rhomboid is being marked as the defect, a small modification is incorporated and M is incorporated over here and then the rhomboid is formed. Because the angle is very acute, a Webster 30 degree angle Plasti is planned and the short diagonal is extended, the side of the defect is extended and it is bisected. Here as we know in a 30 degree angle flap at 30 degrees the angle is marked and the line is drawn. So when this Webster 30 degree angle flap is marked and raised incorporating an M plasti, the resulting suture line is like this. The clinical uses for the Limburg flap are typically on the face, especially the temple region between the eyebrow and the hairline, on the cheek region and for excision of pilonidal sinus and resurfacing. The double rhomboid flap is ideal for elongated defects and the triple rhomboid flap is ideal for resurfacing of circular defects, especially on the scalp. For an excision of a basal cell carcinoma on the back, the margin is marked, the excision is done and a Limburg flap is planned. As shown, the flap is raised and inset is given by transposing the flap. The donor site is closed primarily and the resultant scar is seen. This picture shows a lesion above the right eyebrow. This lesion is going to be excised and the marking is made in the form of a rhomboid and the Limburg flap is marked. It is taken from the forehead region to avoid distorting the eyebrow. The excision is done, the flap raised and inserting has been done. I hope you enjoyed the video. For the general classification of flaps and the introduction to local flaps, click on this video. Do not forget to subscribe to keep connected with the latest in learning hand surgery.